My name is Diana Kim, and I'm going to talk about nanostructures existing on morpho butterfly wings and how these features contribute to optical properties. All of us are familiar with color in terms of pigment. We often learn about the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue in school. But color can also come from interference of light, also called structural color. We see this phenomena every day, such as in shells, soap bubbles, and certain stones, for example. This metallic sheen, also known as iridescence, is caused by structural color. Many animals also exhibit iridescent colors, such as peacocks, beetles, and butterflies. Morpho butterflies are known for their brilliant blue color and can be visible for up to half a mile. There are over 80 species of morpho butterflies in Central and South America. Like the male peacocks, their iridescence is a result of natural selection and gives them an advantage in mating. These butterflies were one of the first animals to be studied for structural color. The study of structural colors can reach back as far as the 1600s, when Robert Hooke and Isaac Newton explored the colors of peacock feathers. In the early 1900s, a great debate arose of whether the metallic sheen of the butterfly was due to light interference or due to surface reflection of the pigments. Walter and Nicholson supported surface colors while Lord Rayleigh became the foremost proponent for multi-layer interference, but he could not provide conclusive evidence due to the limited power of the microscope of the time. Yet even so, later scientists like Mason have been able to hypothesize the general structures on the butterfly scale. It was a surprisingly close guess. It wasn't until after the electron microscope was invented that Anderson and Richards were able to see the details of the ridges along the scale. Later, Helen Ghirardella from 1976 and onwards performed a more comprehensive investigation on various moths and butterflies using the electron microscope. And this is what she observed. We can see that upon closer inspection, the wing is composed of many overlapping scales about 150 micrometer in length and 60 micrometer in width. Each scale has a cover scale on top and a ground scale on the bottom. And both scales have numerous ridges along their lengths. And if we look at an image taken from a scanning electron microscope, this is what the nanostructures look like. You can see that the actual structures are quite close to what Mason predicted in his sketch. A cross-section of the ridges more clearly reveals that each ridge have levels of lamellae, like the branches of a tree. It is these lamellae that creates the blue colors of the wing. The levels of lamellae act like a multi-layer interference model, where shorter wavelengths, like blue, become scattered, or in this case, reflected, while longer wavelengths, like yellow and red, are transmitted through. This effect is called Tyndall scattering. The amount of reflectivity is determined by both the number of lamellae layers and by the ridge spacing. But a viewer is also able to see the blue metallic sheen from a broad angular range. This property is attributed to other structural characteristics. If the pattern of lamellae was truly regular, there would be destructive interference of the blue wavelengths and we would then only see a weak reflection of blue at a restricted range of angles. There are actually structural characteristics that allows for the highest reflectivity. First, the scales are organized like tiles on a roof, reducing destructive interference. Also, for most species of the morpho butterflies, the cover scale acts as a diffuser of the reflected blue light. More importantly, the levels of the lamellae also runs at an oblique angle to the plane of the scale, causing the edges of the lamellae to be at a non-uniform height among the different ridges and on the individual ridge itself. This feature, as well as the narrow spacing between ridges, contributes to light diffraction without interference among the neighbors. One final subtle feature are in the lamellae themselves. The lamella branches are positioned at alternating levels, and the widths of the branches taper off towards the top. This feature allows for a broader range of blue wavelengths to be reflected. These are two different species of morpho butterflies, M. retinor and M. Sikowski. The M. retinor has a deep blue hue, while M. Sikowski displays an almost pearly white and blue color. 
The nanostructures on the scales of these two butterflies are similar, so what accounts for the different hues? The reason for varying intensities of blue is in part due to different levels of pigment. In the M retinor, the pigment absorbs the unwanted colors and enhances the blue. In M Sikowski butterflies, there is less pigment and therefore reflects back a broader range of wavelengths, yielding the pearly white color. So now that we know the physics behind the butterfly cuticle, what are the potential applications of technology? Potarello's group in 2007 demonstrated that the cuticle can be used to detect vapors. They exposed it to water, methanol, and ethanol, and revealed that the reflectance profile alters accordingly in response to the chemical, even at very dilute concentrations of the gas. This same group also demonstrated the potential for a thermal sensor. When the wing is coated with carbon nanotubes, the wing can rapidly respond to minor temperature changes and with high sensitivity. There are distinct advantages to this. They provide more resolution than similar devices available today, it avoids the need for cooling of the device, and you have a direct infrared to UV or visible range readout. Morpho butterfly wings have inspired several commercial products already available today. Morphotech's fabric contains many layers of polyester and nylon that yields high color intensity and fade resistance as no pigments are used. Energy consumption and industrial waste can be avoided with the absence of dye. Chromaflare paint is another successful product used frequently in cars. It contains tiny flakes constructed of aluminum coated with glass-like magnesium fluoride embedded in a semi-translucent chromium. Morpho butterflies also inspire display screens. They contain an array of subpixels that can reflect only one wavelength, while a cluster of subpixels give more color combinations and control brightness. Potentially, they are energy efficient since the only power usage occurs when switching between reflecting and absorbing states. So we have gone over the history, the physics, and a few technologies that the Morpho butterfly wings have motivated. Hopefully, this overview has inspired you, the viewer, as well, with new ideas for the future. Thanks for listening.